What's up, everybody? Gonna do another podcast from my truck as I'm on my way to the store. And um, yeah, man, this is a, a normal occurrence for me because um, the the free flow thought just happens when I'm driving. You know, I'm either listening to a podcast, I'm listening to music, or I don't have anything on it. I'm just kind of like lost in my own thoughts, and ideas pop up in my head, and I go, hey. Instead of just thinking about this idea, let's let's voice it. Let's get it out, and uh, let's share it with the world. So that's what I'm doing, and that's why there's all these podcasts from my truck. Uh, before I talk about today's podcast, which is the dangers, the dangers of being a firefighter. Um, I want to tell you about BulkSupplements.com. Use the discount code Steel Mace Fireman. Go to bulksupplements.com. Pick out a few of the items that you need, like your whey protein, your creatine, your vitamin D, your turmeric, your green matcha. Put it in the cart, and then you type in that discount code Steel Mace Fireman. Get your discount. Help support the podcast. Thank you. All right. The dangers of being a fireman. What do you think I'm about to talk about? You think I'm about to talk about getting lost in a hot, smoky building? Running out of air? Do you think I'm going to talk about maybe building collapses? Flashover? uh, Getting hurt? Getting trapped? I could talk about those things, but guess what? There are very, very good podcasts, books, magazine articles that just that totally discuss all of those major, very, very serious dangers. And I'm not talking about those. Um, but I will say, I will say, 50% of firefighter deaths on the fire ground are from some type of cardiac event. Now, if you're in a fire and your heart is beating through your chest and it's possibly beating 180 beats per minute and you're not in good shape, you're at risk. If you exercise, do cardio, you eat right, not overweight, that 180 beats per minute might be like a hard training day for you and you'll survive. It's not always guaranteed, shit could always go wrong, but you're increasing your chances of survival dramatically. Now, let's leave that to the side because that's that's all real serious shit and I wanted to address that because that is something that firefighters do have to consider. But I'm going to make kind of fun of everything right now, okay? I don't want to get all into the serious stuff other than what I just did. And the dangers of being a firefighter that I want to talk about today are there's a there's a pandemic. Not, not the pandemic you're thinking of. There's another pandemic. It's been here well before the COVID pandemic. And I'm hoping it's going to go away. And it can go away. It can go away. If you listen carefully and you do what I say, the dangers of being a fireman that I'm talking about is having skinny arms and a big fat fucking belly and a weak posterior chain, shriveled up ass, no back. I mean, back hurts all the time because you're, you're glutes and your hamstrings are tight because they're weak okay talking about just looking like a fucking mess all the young firemen go through training academy and uh they lose weight and that's that's like you know that's that's great nowadays like everybody you know they're young they're in their 20s and they they lose 10 15 20 pounds going through their 26 weeks in the academy. They come out and they're thin and they're lean. Now, I will say, 
that even that, even that by itself is pretty fucking weak. Being skinny, that's that's what you have to look forward to coming out of the training academy. Being thin and skinny, you lost weight. Big fucking deal. Anybody could be skinny. Don't eat it. Don't eat anything, and go to the fire academy. I mean, like I, when I was there, we we ate like a quick sandwich and we were like doing shit all day. Okay, the you know you couldn't eat enough. Couldn't eat enough. And you're kind of like under stress and stuff, so you burn a ton ton of calories. And I mean, look, if you're going into the academy overweight as it begins with, and you're like, oh, I'll lose the weight in the academy, that's a shitty attitude. Like, you want to go into the fire academy being one badass dude. Same with the police academy. You don't want to go into police academy being overweight and weak. Everybody's going to see it. And they're going to go, this guy's overweight, weak. He he couldn't even get his shit together to come to the fire academy. You want to show up in the police academy, in the fire academy, at your military training. You want to get in there. And when when you walk in a room, your shoulders are fucking wide. You're up tall. And you're super capable. And everybody sees it right from day one. Wow. This guy took this shit seriously right from the get-go. And he is looking good. And he's looking strong. He's reliable. He's reliable. That guy's a leader. That's what you want. But all right. We're happy with just everybody being thin and lean. And then the joke is, you know, within the first three years on the job, everybody puts the weight back on. Why? Well, you're not exercising anymore. You stop working out. On top of that, you're living the... Shift work lifestyle now. So when you're on shift, right, firehouse meals, they're big, okay? We're eating snacks all day. I I mean, I see guys drinking soda, real soda with sugar in it. Ah, marron. It's crazy. Smoke, they start smoking. They're eating tons of sandwiches with white bread, and they put on the weight, and then they keep putting it on, and the bellies keep getting bigger, and their arms get smaller and their shoulders get real narrow and and you're like looking at somebody and then you go you you, you go okay they're a little out of shape but then at a fire they look like they're gonna die and you're like holy shit this guy's like 10 years younger than me 15 years younger than me (sighs) i'm sorry but this shit has to be said People in this country are afraid to be direct. They're afraid to say what needs to be said. The fire service ain't a joke. We wear American flags on our shoulders. We represent. We're wearing uniforms. Okay? The population, the civilians, they expect something. They don't want to see a fat shit with skinny arms who can't even climb a ladder because he's winded. They want to see... Their expectation. They want to see those superheroes that they always thought we were. All right. We know we're not superheroes. Okay, we got to work together as a team. And when we do that, we can accomplish a lot. The fires do go out. So, the dangers of you morphing from uh, being in shape to out of shape, to having those skinny arms and that big gut. 30-year-olds, 40-year-olds, 50-year-olds on the job. If you're on the job and you're not retired yet and you got uh, a belly hanging over your belt, that is... Mm. Uh, it's stupid. It's stupid. All right? Why, why do you want to look that way? Why? I don't understand it. And the reality is you don't. You don't want to look that way. But you're stuck. You're stuck in a rut. It's hard to get out of that that rut once you're in there. It's hard to walk away from the cake and the pizza and the cigarettes. And it's hard to just go up to the racket early and just turn in and go to sleep rather than 
well, you know, we're going to get bells anyway. We're going to be running all night, so I'm just going to stay up and watch TV. Fuck all that. Take care of yourself, man. You only got one life to live. Take care of yourself. So I'm going to wrap this up, guys. You know, I'm coming off all mean and nasty here. And uh, you probably, you're probably mad at me for saying it. I know you are. You're mad at me because I'm saying what needs to be said when you really should be mad at you. Okay. It's all accountability. It all starts with you. If you can't take care of yourself, you cannot take care of others. Listen to me say this again. If you can't simply take care of yourself, then how do you expect to take care of others? Firefighters, police, military, first responders in general, we are expected to take care of people. Okay? Their worst day. Their worst day. You know? We're supposed to be taking care of them. Not struggling with our own shit. We got a network. We got a network. All right? It's it's tight. You know, guys back each other up all the time. But where I see we are deficient is in the fitness department, the health department. Everything defaults to, you know, biscuits and gravy. Everything defaults to sitting around. Everything defaults to smoking the cigarettes and just not good, healthy behavior. And then the guys like me who speak up and say something because it's the truth, everybody rails against it. Heads, heads, but who the fuck does this guy think he is? Was he think he's special? No, I don't think I'm special. I don't. That's why I take care of myself because I'm not special. Why should I let myself go to shit and then take a salary where I'm expected to be physically fit? You are you are expected to be physically fit for the job. That's why there is a physical fitness test. You don't go through a physical fitness test to get a job working at the shopping store or working for uh, a desk job, do you? Oh, hey, James, we're going we're gonna to hire you. Uh, your job is going to be to answer phones and um, enter data into the computer. But before uh, we actually officially hire you, you're going to have to run three miles, do 200 push-ups, and you're going to have to climb up and down a ladder a bunch of times wearing a tank on your back. Am I right? Look, it is what it is, right? I'm the bad guy. I'll be the bad guy. I don't care. Look, I got 17 years on the job. A little bit more than that, actually. I was promoted to captain two years ago. Um, the best I could do is lead by example. When I walk away from shift, I always think about what I did as a, as a leader. And I will be honest with you. Sometimes I feel like I could have done way, way better. It's hard, you know. I, I, that's one thing I, I have figured out in life is it's okay to, to admit things are hard. It's okay. Because even though it's hard, I still I still go after it. All right? It's when, when you pretend something isn't hard and then just kind of ignore it and don't go after it. That's, that's shitty behavior. But if everybody just says, yeah, man, this shit is hard. It's hard staying lean. It's hard building muscle. It's hard staying away from the junk food. I need help. We have a network. All of us could get together and make this happen. You got two companies in a firehouse, one company in a firehouse, whatever. You got a group there. You make a plan. You know, the captain, he doesn't have to be the leader of that. You, you can make the junior guy the leader. Like, hey, you got two minutes on a job. Guess what? Your job is is to to lead us in being healthier. And he's gonna be like, me, I'm, I'm new. I don't, I get so much. Yeah, you, you're, you're the new guy. You're gonna do all the research. You're gonna help us out, okay? And you're gonna you're gonna help us stay accountable. You could do that. You could do that, and that's gonna teach the young guy a little bit of responsibility, right? And and it's gonna make the group a tighter group. 
Uh, but listen to what I'm saying. So it sounds like a good plan, right? When you say, hey, Fred, did you do that at your firehouse? And the answer is no. How do you like that? I just, I sound like a hypocrite, don't I? Well, I'm not going to make it up any excuses here as to why I haven't done that. I'm just going to say, it's hard. It's hard to get people to, to switch the switch. It's hard to get people to go in from this direction and make a complete 180 in their health. Typically, if you're high pressure on people, they, they don't want to be pressured. They don't want to be told what to do, okay? They want to eat their ice cream. They don't want to be told, no, you can't eat ice cream, right? I'm a grown man. I bust my ass at this job, and I don't need anybody telling me what I can eat and not eat, right? So the whole premise with fitness is always uh, just lead by example. Let the people come to you. When they do, encourage the best behavior you can. But I make this podcast now out of the sheer frustration of it all. The sheer frustration of it all. And I will tell you what it was... That set this off. Uh, I ha- just spoke with somebody at the gym. Um, I got off shift and I was I was working out, doing my back routine, and I was doing a pretty easy workout because uh, you know I didn't sleep much, and I just wanted to do something light. And there's somebody there at the fire at the gym that I know, and they said, uh, "You're a fireman, right?" And I said, "Yeah." And he goes, hey, you know, you're here all the time. You're, you're really dedicated. You're, you're in pretty good shape. Can I ask you how old you are? And I was like, yeah, I'm 48. You know, wow, man, that's really good. Good for you, and thank you for your service. And I said, absolutely. It's, it's my pleasure, and thank you for thanking me. It's good to hear. And then he goes, hey, you know, I got I to gotta say, you know, you're a paid fireman, right? I said, yeah. He goes, I think these guys over here, they're like volunteers, so maybe maybe it doesn't really matter. But, yo, man, they were fucking out of shape. They were all standing outside. They had big guts and little arms. That's where I got that from. So I said, well, hold on a second. We got that in the paid department just as much as the volunteer department. And I explained, look, we're a cross-section of society. We're just human beings, okay? We fall into bad habits like everybody else. You know, you know, or I said, how many friends do you have that don't even work out? And they make fun of you all the time for it. And he, he was like, yeah, you're right. I have like a bunch of friends and they come over for barbecues and stuff. That's what I see. Them. But when I say, hey, we're going to go for a hike or we're going to go, um, go work out. They, they, they don't want to go. Right. So I was like, yeah, see, it's the same thing. And I said, and listen, I got to say another thing. The volunteers are the shit. All right. The re- just think about it. These guys and girls are volunteering to fight fires for nothing. Okay? For nothing. And they're juggling a job or two and a family and everything like that. So, you know, do not knock them. Do not knock them. But, yes, they need to be in shape because it's that kind of job. The whole idea is you don't want to die on the job. And you don't want to, you don't, if you, if you go down in the fire, then that means everybody else there is going to have to go get you putting everybody in danger. So you, you being out of shape is a danger to yourself and to those around you. It's that fucking simple. And I have to, I'm, I'm getting bold, I guess. I'm starting to get bold in my, in my old age, in my years now. But you know what? When the truth is the truth, it's the truth. Don't hate the messenger. Hate hate the hate the message if you will, but still it's the truth. And the truth is leadership, the officers, the chiefs, the captains, the lieutenants, whatever. They're not they're not fostering a atmosphere of health. They're not encouraging fitness yeah there's gyms in the firehouse yeah guys work out but not all of them okay 
And I'm going to say, if you don't want to work out, you don't want to pick up a weight. You don't want to go for a walk. You don't want to go on a treadmill. I, I respect that too. Okay, because you actually don't need to do those things to be in shape. But if you're a fat fuck smoking cigarettes and you don't work out, that's fucked up. If you're not going to work out, don't smoke. If you're not going to work out, don't be fat. Just don't eat garbage food all the time. Be thin. All right, that's fine. You could be thin and be a firefighter. You don't need big muscles. You don't because it's a team effort. The ladders go up. As, you know, the lines get stretched. The holes in the roofs get cut. Uh, thin, wiry, tough, sinewy guys are just as badass. And in fact, there is a running joke that the muscle head firemen are always the ones that gas out first. It's those thin, wiry guys that just seem to be like unbreakable. And I'm kind of like thinking if, if you're that way, that's great. Um, it works for the job. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not a big jacked up muscle head myself. I'm, I'm six foot at 200 pounds, um, lean. Okay. I've, I've been, uh, thinner back in the past and I put on muscle and I really enjoy having the muscle, but I still feel like I'm that thin sinewy guy underneath too. Um, and look, I don't think I'm anybody special. I really don't. I gas out at fires. I get tired. The tank gets heavy. It, you're uncomfortable the whole time. Really uncomfortable. And you got to get used to that. And it's, wow, it's a lot. So, um, it, it's hard. Everything is hard and I get it. And I don't high pressure people or anything like that. And this podcast is a message to, to anyone who wants to change their life. You know, if you're somebody just approaching the job, you know, you're, you're maybe going to be going into the academy. What I said before, listen to what I'm saying. Start working out and get in shape before you go into the academy. Come in and let those guys know you're no joke. You know? Don't wait till you get in there to eke through and maybe I'll lose the weight in the academy. And then stay committed, man. Say You don't have to say, oh, for the rest of my career, I'm going to be thin and strong, blah, blah, blah. But don't let yourself go in the first three years, first two years. Maybe set the bar a little higher. Like, I'm going to stay thin, ripped, and healthy for, at minimum, the first five years on the job. And then, from there... You, when you hit the five years, you better say, okay, another five years, just another five years. And then you get, you're almost, you're almost there. Then you go another five years. All right. Halfway through, maybe you back off. Now you're getting older. You want to eat some ice cream, give yourself some slack. I don't know. But if you want to change, if you want to change, if you want to be a badass, it's okay. You know, it's not ego. It's not ego to walk around like, hey, I'm a badass. That's what the job calls for. Men and women who are like waking up and saying, I am going to kick the living balls out of this day because I am a friggin' badass. Say that. Say that to yourself. Okay? Because you will believe it. We don't need pussies walking around like, uh, I don't have an ego. Well, I don't, well, well, I'm a badass. Like you're trying to be humble. We don't got time for that, man. This is, this is firefighting. If you're going in the military. You really don't have time for that. People are going to be fucking sending bullets down the range at you. You want to project badass to your team and you want the same from them. And you want to know you're a bunch of wolves, right? You don't want people that are just like content to be like I'm nobody special I'm nobody special I'm humble I don't I don't have this big ego fuck that ego it up man let your ego fly nobody's really gonna take it that seriously anyway and you don't have to take it that seriously 
but you send the right message to yourself and to the people around you. I am here to fuck shit up. I am here to dominate. You can count on me to be that guy. You want, you want your captain to go, hey, Joe, you're the right guy for this job. Go fuck that up. Dude, you'll get, your hairs will be standing up on the back of your neck. Like, wow, they think I'm that guy? They get that from me? Wow. Yeah, man. That's, that's the truth. That's the real truth right there. So I'm going to end it right here, guys. I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to, uh, you know, rattle a cage or two and just, just kind of break the rust here. If you have any questions, you can email me at steelmacenation at gmail.com. You can go to, uh, at steelmacenation on Instagram. You can DM me. And of course, um, please follow the YouTube channel. There's going to be more of this coming down the pike. And um, I'm looking forward to sharing it with you. And also, check out adxclub.com. Go to adxclub.com for adjustable maces. I've talked about them all the time. They're on my Instagram. They're in my YouTube channel. Uh, Don G down in Florida. He's a friend of mine. He makes American-made maces. State-of-the-art technology. I'm telling you, if you never had one of these things in your hand, when you get it in your hand, you're going to be like, this is like a piece of military hardware. This is, this is awesome. So go check that out. Thank you very much for listening. And um, we're still friends, I hope. I, I really hope we are. <laughs> I hope I wasn't too mean. I'm really not a mean guy. I said that in the last podcast. <laughs> I think I'm really just, you know, starting to open up a little bit more nowadays. And um, and it feels good, you know, but I don't want people to be offended. I really don't. I want to help people. I want to, ha- I want to give back to the fire service and do it in any way, shape, or form I can. And at the end of the day, it's all jelly beans and gumdrops. All right. Talk to you later.